Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on the interpolated type of flaps using the paramedian forehead flap as the prime example because of its pivotal role in the reconstruction of large nasal defects. Interpolated flaps are usually axial flaps occasionally in very vascular areas like the retroauricular area you can have a random pattern of and interpolated flaps to uh, reconstruct, for example, defects in the auricle. And the main thing about interpolated flaps is that the base of the flap is distant from the defect, uh, and the flap with its pedicle has to cross over or sometimes under a bridge of intact tissues in between the base of the flap and the defect. The base of the flap would remain uh, temporarily attached to the defect for a few weeks until it receives its new blood supply from the recipient area and then in a second stage it can be released and the uh, donor area reconstructed. The paramedian forehead flap is a good example of interpolated flaps. It's considered the workhorse for reconstruction of major nasal defects because it provides a significant amount of skin and tissues for replacement of the uh, nasal defect. This type of skin, the color, the texture, and the thickness is quite similar to the nasal skin. It has a reliable vascularity. It's based on the supratrochlear artery which has a consistent entrance into the flap pedicle and the flap pedicle itself can be narrowed to as little as 15 millimeters and the flap can extend up to the hairline and sometimes beyond that to provide adequate cover for the nasal defect. The paramedian forehead flap receives most of its blood supply from the supratrochlear artery with some contribution from branches of the supraorbital artery as well. The supratrochlear artery has a fairly consistent course and landmarks. It exits the orbit at a point roughly corresponding to the medial end of the eyebrow, somewhere between 17 millimeters and 22 millimeters off the midline. At a point about one centimeter above the eyebrow, the main stem of the artery can be located and its presence confirmed by a Doppler. It then, uh, cor the course of the artery afterwards runs vertically in the forehead until it reaches the hairline and beyond. In its uh, initial uh, course, it lies deep to the frontalis muscle and superficial to the corrugator but uh, it soon pierces the frontalis and lies in a subcutaneous plane until it ends up uh, in the scalp. Harvesting the flap starts by taking a template of the nasal defect or a, a template of the excised lesion and any attached subunits. This template is then placed along the course of the artery and its pedicle uh, towards the hairline, usually just before the hairline is the place where you would want to have uh, to place your template and design the flap. Sometimes if it is necessary to take more tissues or a longer arc of rotation, the template can be pla placed superior to the hairline, but the disadvantage of this is that removal of hair follicles or hair would be required in the post-operative period. The uh, defect template will be placed upside down so that the proximal area of the flap would fit into the proximal area of the defect. The distal area of the flap will fit into the distal area of the defect. Sometimes it's useful to have an extra piece of skin attached to the distal area of the flap to act like a handle and avoid uh, handling the uh, tissues of the flap itself while transposing it to its new position and this extra bit of skin can then be discarded off 
the vascular pedicle of the flap should be marked carefully. The artery lies anywhere between 17 millimeters and 22 millimeters of the midline of the face. This is where we expect to find the artery itself. So if we make the width of the pedicle about 15 millimeters, we're pretty sure to include the artery and the vascular pedicle. But this, of course, can be confirmed using a Doppler. The artery then uh, passes vertically upwards towards the hairline. And if we use a template, you can draw the flap and dissection then proceeds first in the subcutaneous plane because the artery lies superficial to the frontalis and while dissecting towards the eyebrow you need to go deeper uh, superiosteal plane because the artery at this level is uh, deeper to the frontalis and the orbicularis muscles. The flap can then be rotated always medially to fill up the defect in the nose. So this is marking of the uh, midline of the face and 17 millimeters to 22 millimeters of this, you would expect to find the pedicle of the artery, a centimeter above the medial end of the eyebrow and then vertical course of the artery towards the hairline and you take the template and place it just beneath the hairline to mark the uh, area of the flap that's going to cover the nasal defect at this level the superior part of the flap the dissection is subcutaneous, but in the, uh, as the dissection proceeds toward the eyebrow, you would need to get into the um, um, subperiosteal level because the artery lies underneath the frontalis muscle in there. That's the cephalic part of the a flap incised and ready to rotate medially to cover up the defect. And you would leave the pedicle attached to the flap for about three or two, four weeks until the flap established its blood supply from its recipient area. The distal area of the flap, the part that covers the nasal defect, is thinner than the proximal area of the flap. The distal area of the flap has the supratrochlear artery and the uh, subcutaneous plane sandwiched between the uh, skin and the frontalis muscle deep to it. Um, the, this area of the flap can be thinned carefully by partial removal of the frontalis muscle and some of the subcutaneous tissue so as to fit well into the nasal defect. On the other hand, the proximal part of the flap is thick because the dissection here was in the subperiosteal plane and uh, no uh, uh, thinning is required for this part of the flap but scoring of the periosteum can allow the flap to be stretched over a little bit more. The repair of the donor site would require ample undermining in the plane superficial to the periosteum but under the frontalis muscle. This way it can be closed primarily, at least in the proximal part of the flap where the width of the pedicle was below 15 millimeters. In the distal part of the flap, if more than 2.5 centimeter uh, was taken for, to cover the nasal defect, some parts of this distal part can be left to granulate, or you can use an A to T type of plasty by mobilization of skin from both sides uh, below the hairline to close up primarily, very occasionally. Uh, 
any um, flap, any free grafts will be used to cover this area if it is very large. The undersurface of the flap, which would remain raw, can be covered by a small uh, full thickness skin uh, graft taken from the supraclavicular fossa. After three or four weeks from the first stage operation, the area of the flap that is now attached to the nasal defect would have received new vascularization from the recipient area and the pedicle of the flap can be divided and released to return back to its normal position. So that's releasing of the pedicle of the flap, leaving the distal end of the flap uh, to fill up the nasal defect and the released part of the pedicle can now be returned to its original position. The paramedian forehead flap remains one of the best surgical options available for reconstruction of a large nasal defect, but it's not without its own disadvantages, including the scar at the forehead and donor area and the limited length of the flap if there is a low hairline. But the main disadvantage is, of course, that it requires at least two procedures and often more to divide the uh, vascular pedicle of the flap and return it back to its uh, original position and also to refine the shape of the reconstructed nose. Other examples of interpolated flaps and the reconstruction of the head and neck includes the use of the deltopectoral skin flap and the reconstruction of skin defects in the neck or in the face below the level of the zygoma. Uh, other examples include the retroauricular skin flap used uh, as a random interpolated flaps for reconstruction of uh, defects in the auricle and the nasolabial uh, interpolated flaps used in the reconstruction of nasal defects. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on interpolated uh, flaps and the paramedian forehead flap. Salam alaikum.